And I think Anton should be joining. Let me think. Okay, so we can start. Um, so essentially what we want to achieve is um, a place where researchers can go into, uh, indicate their direction of research, and um, basically from there, we give them more powerful tools to get more relevant information and uh, less complex than um, you know, any existing combinations of tools, uh, interactions, because what researchers do right now, they either use multiple tools to reach to the same conclusions, or they use like super complex queries using MASH and other medical ontologies. And we want to eliminate that and simplify that with using machine learning as the background layer that kind of aggregates all of this information. So we have Core 19, which, is, which we've enriched um, to some extent with all the medical ontology stuff. And we have, um, I would say, preliminary uh, understanding of how the user interface should look like. Um, have you had a chance or have you seen the Figma prototypes? Um, yeah, so I was looking at here. Let me pull it up right now. Um, yeah, I have, had, I have had a chance to review uh, Mira and the Figma. Uh, if you're on there, if you click uh, version 2.1, mm -hmm. do you have that? Sure. Yep. Uh, so here you can see kind of the, the introduction screen the search bar uh, where you type in something, the keyword, and then you are, uh, you're able to select the closest match from the controlled vocabularies. So okay. if you're typing in Andrew Tinsin, you're gonna see um, you know, suggestions from UMLS, from uh, Chebi or any other medical ontologies. So you can select that. So you can pick multiple keywords um, be it disease or chemical or any other things, and then click search. From there, um, you're entering this kind of like a search view where there are a couple of things. First one, this giant uh, graph. This is actually our attempt to broaden the scope of things that a researcher is looking at because we got uh, feedback from multiple researchers that sometimes they're so focused on specific keywords that they're really you know, missing out the big picture and all of the things that they should be looking at, but they're not because they're locked into a specific direction of research. So here, if you're tapping in Andrew Tinsin, um, actually, let me share with you a second image that will be super helpful to understand this interaction. Um, let me send that to you in Slack. Done. Got it. Um, so maybe you can actually share your screen. Uh, I'm kind of multitasking from mobile and the laptop, but they do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Let me pull it. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I'll is this what cool. you want to be looking at? Yeah. Yeah. So on the left, you, you kind of see this uh, step that we've just observed in Figma. Uh, if you zoom in, you're going to see this direction of research. Uh, Andriotensin receptors, viral agents, COVID-19. And the next step is this graph. And we imagine it being a graph because it makes the most sense in terms of showing relationships and kind of weights uh, of importance. But it can be as simple as a list of um, you know, most relevant terms or things uh, related to your direction of research. Ideally, it would be a graph. And this is what you see in the Figma. Uh, yeah. So we, we let researchers broaden the scope and kind of tap on different uh, things beyond the, the three keywords or whatever keywords that they typed in. And then we give them ability to narrow uh, back down and pick the actual collections. So collections, be it, uh, just saying like, give me only clinical trials or give me clinical trials from Italy that uh, mention elderly population and, um, you know, are, uh, let's say, the, the clinical trials that interact with um, or, or mention uh, females. 
or something like that. So basically giving very specific filters to narrow down a very broad uh, research topic. And yeah. then as the last tab, uh, we're able to showcase the specific data points that pertain to collection, like sample size, age, study design for specific clinical trials um, collection. Obviously, if this is not clinical trials, but like meta-analysis or any other collection, uh, there will be different data points, uh, which is also kind of like dynamic nature of collections. And then the second part is data points per graph. So this is the data points that are specific to the direction of research. So if you're looking into angiotensin receptors, most probably you would be interested in seeing a column um, that is ACE slash ARB, ARB. And I have no idea what that means, but I've observed that in literature reviews um, when it comes to um, ACE receptors and angiotensin system. So the idea here is that we go from the uh, kind of the broad GORD19 to, to narrow, which is keywords, and then broad again was a subset of GORD19 and medical ontologies, and then we narrow it again with collections. And uh, the ultimate end goal, if you switch back to Figma, um, So here you can see this interaction with the graph, but also you see the filters, the collection filters on the, on the left, and you mm -hmm. see the search results. Uh, so the ultimate goal is being able to not just find the articles, but also find all the potential information that is extracted from these articles. So each of these um, articles would be augmented with literature reviews, uh, mm -hmm. be it literature review that is generated by a machine, uh, like us extracting sample size, age, incubation period, and any other things that we've done for Kegel round one, or literature reviews that uh, actual medical uh, professionals did. And on the interface level, the only distinction is some mark, you know, that it was human produced or machine produced. And this way, researchers can also collaborate and potentially fix some of the things that machines are um, annotating as wrong data and also improve the machine learning models this way. If the sample size is wrong or the age group is wrong or incubation period is wrong, et cetera. So this is kind of the um, bird's eye view of the product as it is. And obviously there is no way to make it happen without web developers. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, so this is, um, okay. So I've seen the like the literature review tool where it sort of has the map and a lot of other different things. Is that like a sort of separate product or is that is this sort of an element of that? So the current map is just a proof of concept was Power BI, um, mm -hmm. which is, you know, and basically a visualization dashboard. Yeah. So it's definitely part of it of this thing, but it's just Let's say that the Power BI uh, dashboard is is everything stuffed into one big dashboard. So gotcha. there is no um, actual, um, you know, user experience or user driven experience in there. It's kind of like here's everything. Uh, explore what, what do you think is is yeah. needed for, gotcha. which is not how researchers typically work. So does this um, does this exist already, and you're doing an update to it somewhere, or are these versions sort of just versions of the your conception of it? This is just mockups. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So the only so thing that exists currently, if you go onto coronamad.org, uh, just go ahead. Corona Mad. Mad like like PubMed. Just Corona Mad. Oh, gotcha. Hmm, I'm not seeing it. Could you link me to it? Oh, here, never, never mind. I got it. I got it. Okay. Um, so this is actually what you were looking at is the web app that we quickly spinned up using Node.js and and Vue.js. And this is a list of um, key scientific questions that uh, researchers was, were doing manually. So if you click into one of these, you'll see the actual literature review tables. 
And if you scroll uh, to the right, you'll be able to see um, all the extractions that yeah. they've done manually. So this is the only thing that we have in terms of web development uh, work. We can either build on top of this or create a completely new repository. Um, this is also subject to discussion. Cool. All right. This already good. works and integrates with uh, our MongoDB, which is the mm -hmm. kind of the central storage for all of the data. Yeah, on search we work. We work with the Mongo. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah, so huge, long, long way to go. Um, awesome, yeah. So I would say it would be great to kind of, um, even if we start from simple HTML pages, just to start transforming these mockups into HTML pages uh, mm -hmm. using like default, like Bootstrap or any other uh, frameworks. So it's, you know, clickable, uh, even if it doesn't look fancy. Um, we just have to start somewhere. So I mean, you can... do you guys have an, a, a stack of technologies in mind? I mean, I could just mock up something in like React or whatever. It doesn't mean that we have to commit to that forever. Um, but a lot of this yeah, stuff is I mean... going to be sort of reasonable components that would be um, even for doing the um, sort of uh, uh, mock, like not necessarily mock, but you know, mocking up this so you actually have actual interaction. Um, would be quite good in React, yeah. uh, and then there's Storybook uh, sort of module as well, where you can create, you can, um, there, it sort of has a language where you can put it in, um, I can show, I can do a couple things today, and I can kind of show you what I'm talking about, but it puts it in a way where it sort of uh, presents it like, you know, you'll have a list on the left of like all the different components, and then the larger pages that they form into, um, and it's a good way of sort of demoing the stuff all in one place. That'd be great. If you yeah, yeah, that's, that's um, that's the the one time I've done web development professionally. That was the technology we use, so it'd just be easy for me to hop back into that, set it up, and um, give us give us the starting place. It doesn't necessarily commit us to that stack um, because I'm sure we're gonna have to redo it all eventually, anyways. Um, but that people start seeing uh, some of the interaction. Yeah, um, I mean, let's do it. Uh, whatever you can uh, kind of start today, we can sync tomorrow. On, uh, mm -hmm. on the progress and we, we can quickly iterate on that. And yeah. uh, the current scope of kind of like the user research is is limited to the current Figma, but I would say just try to, to replicate it as much as, as you can yeah. and we'll go from there. Yeah, I'll just start with the search page um, and um, yeah, we'll get it going from there. Is there, is there anybody else who's interested in doing this or um, am I the kind of the first person to be working on it? In terms of web development, you are. Yeah. And <laughs> Not a lot a of AI researchers with... also know how to do web development. <laughs> exactly. And it's a challenge for, for us as a community. But yeah. hey, I, I truly believe that once we start something, we can mm -hmm. get more people to uh, contribute. Uh, it's just the cold start uh, that is very, very challenging. I can pass it. I can send it to um, some of my professors at my university that I just finished that as well. Um, and see if some people there might be interested in doing some of the website. That'd be even if more If I amazing. send it to the department chair, they'll throw it in the newsletter for sure. Nice. Yeah. Great, man. Um, I'm, cool. I'm excited. Let's, let's maybe, um, I'm trying to reactivate daily calls. So not sure if I'm going to make this happen tomorrow, but let's touch base sometime uh, tomorrow afternoon and see where, where the progress is. Yeah, definitely. Um, it'll take me a, a good a portion of time just to get sort of the environment going. Um, but then, yeah, I should I be able to at least have something to show for tomorrow. Awesome. All right. Thanks, cool. man. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon. Talk tomorrow. All right, bye. Bye-bye.